So this question was posed to the disciples, but he never wanted the disciples' opinion or thoughts at this particular time. What he wanted was to hear what the people had to say. The answers came. The answering said, John the Baptist. But some say Elias, and others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. He now said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Now at this point in time, he wanted to have an understanding as to what the disciples know concerning him. Peter was the one who answered and said unto him, He said, The Christ of God which means the sent one from God, the anointed one of God, the Christos, the anointed one, the sent one. And so Peter declared this, and Jesus, the Bible said, he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be slain and be raised the third day. But then Jesus continued in the same discourse. He said to them all, If any man will come after me, if we take it clause by clause, if any man will come after me, Looking at it at face value, it would appear as though he's referring to those who are willing to walk the streets with him. It would appear as though he's referring to those who are willing to go wherever he goes. It would appear as though he's just looking at a physical journey. So looking at it at face value, that's what we will gather from it. If any man will come after him, therefore any man who will walk behind him and follow him to Galilee and follow him to Nazareth and follow him to the pool of Bethesda and so on and so forth. But it goes beyond that. Because if it was all about following him in the physical sense, then all of our efforts to serve God would not be necessary. Following him would just be as easy as coming to church. But it goes beyond just that. Tell your neighbor it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. I get a little more monitor on this, please. Thank you. Now, he said, if any man will come after me. So now he's looking beyond just the physical steps, walking behind him, but looking at following his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now note in the previous verse, verse 22, he said the Son of Man must suffer many things. He was saying, I am going to suffer many things. And in the next verse, he was saying, if any man will come after me, meaning if any man will suffer like me. Oh, hallelujah. 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 So he said, if any man will come after me, the first thing he must do, he must deny himself. So following Jesus requires self-sacrifice. Yes. And I'm afraid that many of us have not yet given up ourselves. And as a result of not giving up ourselves, we can't experience God the way we read about Him. Because we have not yet given up ourselves. So much of us is still alive that so little of God is exhibited in our lives. Yes, yes. You can help me preach or you can listen, whichever one you choose, that's fine. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. But he said, if any man will come after me, let him do what? Deny himself. Therefore, make of himself a sacrifice. Therefore, deprive himself of his own ambitions and desires and, and put aside his will. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
and take up his cross daily. daily. Now in the book of St. Matthew, the same account is recorded, but the word daily was not placed there. Now in this account from Luke, it says, take up his cross daily. daily. Now the cross is an instrument of torture. It was specifically designed so as to serve judgment upon those who were uh, guilty of criminal offenses. Hence, Jesus was crucified between two thieves. Now, they were deserving of the death of the cross, but Jesus was not. And I observed what Jesus said, that we should take up the cross daily. Therefore, every day that the Christian walk, you must be prepared for some torture. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take up the cross daily. But note, the cross is not just an instrument of torture, but the ultimate of the cross, or the final analysis of the cross, is death. Yes. Mm. Now when we talk about death, we're not talking about death as in sleeping or cessation of life. We're talking about death in terms of separation. So the ultimate of the cross is that there is separation. So when Jesus went to the cross, not only did he lay down his physical life, but in addition to that, he was separated from his family, he was separated from his disciples, he was separated from the world. Hallelujah. 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 So therefore, if we are going to go after him, we are going to have to give up ourselves. And we're going to have to take up the cross daily. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. So like Paul, we're going to have to reach the point of death every day. Hallelujah. Paul said, I die daily. He was simply saying, I repent, I cleanse myself daily. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus was saying, take up the cross daily. So you've got to get ready for the torture and the death daily. Yes, yes. You will still be alive in the physical, but in the spiritual, there need to be a submissiveness to God on a daily basis. So therefore, I submit to you and I that tonight's anointing and flow of blessing is not good enough for tomorrow. Because tomorrow, tonight's blessing will only be memories to live by. Yes. But we can't live by memories because memories have no effect on reality. Oh, hallelujah. So you've got to die daily. So if you repented yesterday, you've got to repent again today. Because guess what? Every single day, it's a day of death. Yes. Touch your neighbor and ask them, are you ready to die for today? Are you willing to die tomorrow? But I recognize that Jesus continued in the same verse, verse 23. He says, take up his cross daily and follow him. I observe from this that without the cross, we cannot truly follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me talk to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, you need a cross need to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you need a cross to follow Jesus. But not only do you need a cross, you need some enemies to put some pressure on your cross. Yes, yes, yes. Because without the enemies, we don't pray like we ought to pray. Shake your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you need another enemy to nudge you and make you a little, a little stronger in the faith of God. Somebody shout out with me. Go ahead. I want you to observe with me the fact that Jesus' enemies were not the world, but they were the chief priests and elders and scribes oh my god religious people 